Everyone is talking about artificial intelligence, or as it's more commonly known, AI. The rise of AI over the past few years has been overwhelming, with companies like OpenAI coming seemingly out of nowhere to now having more than 180 million active users. We've all heard about how AI has the potential to revolutionize entire industries, making them more efficient and productive. We've also heard about how AI has the potential to disrupt entire job markets. But there is one critical topic missing from this conversation. Water. Hello everyone and welcome to Time Bomb. In this epi- Hold on. <laughs> That's better. Okay. In this episode, we're talking about artificial intelligence and its rapidly increasing thirst for our fresh water. So what exactly is AI? Well, at its simplest, AI is a technology that tries to simulate human intelligence using computers. But these aren't just ordinary computers. In order for AI to process huge volumes of data through billions of parameters, AI requires very large clusters of servers, with each server using multiple graphical processing units, or GPUs. These servers are so power hungry, they typically consume between 1 and 3 kilowatts each. Even a lower-end AI server uses more electricity than the average American home, and a higher-end server can use nearly four times as much. However, these power-hungry servers don't work alone. They work in large clusters housed in vast warehouses called data centers. It's these data centers that provide the infrastructure for these servers. Infrastructures such as electricity, data connections, and environmental controls like cooling systems. The enormous energy consumption of these data centers is well known. What is not so well known is that these data centers consume massive quantities of water. Data centers consume water in two ways, cooling and power generation. There is also a significant quantity of water required in chip manufacturing, but that is out of scope for this conversation. We want to focus on the water that is directly consumed by data centers through power generation and cooling. Data centers generate a tremendous amount of heat. This heat needs to be dissipated to prevent the servers from overheating. To remove the heat, data centers use water-cooled chillers to circulate water through the data center and absorb the heat. The heated water is then pumped to a cooling tower where it is cooled by evaporation. Then we have power generation. In 2021, 73% of the electricity generated in the United States came from thermoelectric power plants. Thermoelectric power uses various heat sources to boil water to create steam to generate power. Not only is water lost in the power generation process, but most power plants rely on fresh water to cool the power generating equipment. According to Google's latest environmental report, and I put a link to the report in the video description below, Google's cell phone data centers alone directly consumed 5.2 billion gallons of water for on-site cooling in 2022. That's over 16,000 acre feet of water. And that does not include the many third-party data centers that Google leases. And that's just for cooling the data centers, not power generation. When we include power generation, that number increases to 5.6 billion gallons, or 17,000 acre feet of water. Overall, Google's data center water usage in 2022 increased by 20% compared to 2021. Much of that increase in water consumption is directly attributable to the growth of AI. Now, let's take a look at Microsoft one of the largest investors and backers of OpenAI and its famous product, ChatGPT. In 2022, Microsoft's water consumption increased by 1.7 billion gallons. Much of that is due to the training and hosting of new AI technologies. That's an increase of 34% in water usage in just one year. The biggest players in AI today in regards to server footprint are Microsoft, Google, and Meta. Together, the data centers owned by these three companies consumed 400 billion gallons of water last year in the United States alone. 
That's 1.2 million acre feet of water, or about 8% of the total annual water consumption from the Colorado River. A recent study from Cornell University predicts that global AI demand will be accountable for 3.4 to 5.3 million acre feet of water in 2027. To put that into perspective, California's entire Colorado River water allocation is 4.4 million acre feet. For an example of how much water AI consumes, let's take a look at OpenAI's GPT-3. Much of the development and training of GPT-3 took place at Microsoft's data centers in California, Arizona, and a specific cluster of data centers in Des Moines, Iowa. These data centers, of course, generate massive amounts of heat, especially during the summer months. To keep this equipment cool, the data centers in Iowa use water from the Raccoon and Des Moines rivers. However, these rivers also provide drinking water to the nearby communities. Recently, local government officials have become so concerned with water availability that they issued this report stating that they will not consider future data center projects unless the new projects can significantly reduce their water usage. And that's in Iowa, where temperatures are cooler and water is abundant. The situation in Des Moines is just one example of how a data center can impact a community. Consider how many data centers are located in the southwest of the United States, where temperatures are higher and water is scarce. The United States operates more data centers by far than any other country. Currently, there are more than 5,300 large data centers located in the United States. That's 10 times more than second place Germany. So far, we have focused on the development and training of AI. But what about simply interacting with an AI chatbot by asking a few questions? How much water does that consume? Well, one recent study calculated how many queries it would take to consume a half liter bottle of water. The point of this study was to show how water consumption changes depending on the location of the AI data center. I find the results very interesting. For a data center hosted in Arizona, it would take just 15 queries to consume a half liter bottle of water. It takes 33 queries in the Des Moines, Iowa data centers to consume that same half liter bottle of water. Apparently, Washington state is very inefficient with water because it only takes 10 queries to consume that same bottle of water. The most efficient data centers in regards to water consumption are located in Ireland, where it takes nearly 70 queries to consume 500 milliliters of water. Again, all of this information is based on GPT-3. We know that GPT-4 and future versions of AI will all require significantly more power and therefore significantly more water. So what can be done to prevent AI from consuming our already over allocated freshwater resources? One idea is to use software for load balancing AI training across locations or to schedule it for cooler times of the day to minimize water evaporation during the cooling process. Another innovative approach involves using alternative cooling methods. For example, companies like Google and Meta have started exploring the use of seawater cooling for their data centers. Although this method is limited to coastal areas, that just may work for the inefficient data centers located in Washington State and California. This is a complex situation that is evolving every day. I'd really like to know what you think. Please join the conversation in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Please hit the like button on this video and consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.